guys and ghouls and welcome to another episode of fright mike i'm liz i'm sam and we are starting a brand new month of animated horror yes <laughs> bringing those cartoons to life i love <laughs> i'm so excited for this yeah this will be fun for sure this was actually an idea we had two years ago yeah i think so like the first year i think we were yeah but we i don't know what happened we had bigger and better things apparently yeah we had other options and we went with those but we're back to it <laughs> you know what hear me out i'm glad that we waited because back when we first started as with everything you know it's a little rough a little rocky a little rusty <laughs> and i feel like i feel like we would have not done these episodes justice yeah not that like i don't know they're animated horror so like how in-depth can you get but I feel like we would have taken it too seriously. I don't know. You know? So what we're saying is don't listen to our early episodes. Yeah, in fact, or, forget forget or, we even had early episodes. Or just like, just take into consideration that we were very new at doing this. Yes. And very focused on every detail. Every detail. Of everything. Yeah. Very serious. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like my voice was also higher back then. <laughs> because I was so nice. nervous. Oh, yeah. Okay, talking like this. And now, I mean, now it's dropped like seven octaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. My real self is coming out. Exactly. So, we decided to start this month off strong with Coraline. Coraline. From 2009. Great movie. Family friendly. Yes. If you want to scar your children. <laughs> it's a great way to do it. I mean, there's a few great of them this month it. that I feel like could scar your kids, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I... Oh, man. Some nice gateway horror here. I think so, too. And I think it's cool for kids and adults as well. Yeah. Did exactly. you ever read the book? No, I have it, though. Interesting. Uh, but I've never read it. I always remember seeing the cover of it, but for some reason, I never bothered and I'm a little upset about it, so maybe I'll add it to my summer... No. Summer reads? Is it still technically summer? Yeah. Yeah, it's still technically summer. Sum- my end hot of summer shit, reads. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. What'd you say? That's hot as shit, so yeah, it's still summer to me. True. True. Yeah. It'll be my end of summer reads. I don't think it's a very big book, from what I remember. I will... When I was reading these, you know, and I always fear calling them facts. It's the facts, you know, the trivia on IMDb... I don't know how tr- like truthful they are. Yeah, I have a few of those. <laughs> Supposedly in Coraline, so in the movie, there's a character Wyborn or YB, they call him, and he wasn't in the book. Yeah, but, but they, they s- added him in. Yes, to give her someone to talk to. So she wasn't just self-dialogue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, and also, again, according to IMDb, so I don't know how reliable IMDb is, they said that Coraline in the book can't just willingly go back and forth into the other world and only goes back into the other world um when her parents are missing aside from the first time she goes in she only goes in again to get her parents because she's apparently like a lot smarter in the book and like Mm -hmm. catches on quicker so that whole like second trip or third, I think she goes back there a few times in the yeah, movie. Yeah, I think at least four or five. Because then she, she goes does, initially. Well, she goes for each thing. Like she goes to see the grave or the not the graveyard, the garden. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the circus. Mm-hmm. And then the burlesque. And then the burlesque show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so at least three times, if mm-hmm. not more, though. And then she goes back. I think a fourth to get her parents. Yeah. But in yeah, the book, exactly. she only goes twice. Maybe that's why the book's so short. <laughs> Probably probably but you know what we've seen but the it. idea was there <laughs> yeah the, i mean you know what i know uh, the length of a book has nothing to do with what they can do with the movie because i always say look at the curious case of benjamin button mm-hmm. it's a three hour movie extravaganza but the it's a sh- it's based on a short story that's crazy mm-hmm. i didn't know that yeah and yet there's some 
short stories that are adapted as full-length movies that definitely shouldn't be no they should be left as short stories but you know it's all what you do with it yeah I and this i think that they were able to do a lot with it especially with i mean really all of these movies that we're talking about have like these like feats of animation like in different time periods i think but this was like crazy mm-hmm. crazy awesome yeah and up until oh god what is the name of that Leica? no it was a Ku kubo oh the, the, the kubo movie? and the two strings yeah. yeah uh up until that movie came out this was the longest running stop or yeah stop motion mm-hmm. okay I, I almost wanted to say slow-mo stop yeah. motion animation movie that's that's pretty cool and then kubo came out yeah so then that was the longest but still very cool it's just impressive it's yeah. impressive because you forget you almost forget that it's like a puppet yeah like a thing you know like a whole everything has like been crafted like it's not just like your typical animation that's been drawn out and you know animated it's there's more to it than that it's very cool it's just really impressive it's a really cool art form and it is so painstaking i'm sure but the results are like phenomenal yeah this movie's so pretty to look at it is it's oh very God. cool i yeah. can't even imagine having to work <laughs> i mean oh God, obviously no. the people that do like this is what they want to do mm-hmm. and like this is like their dedication and obviously it like pays off big time but to like just be done like could you imagine the, <laughs> the sigh of relief being, like seeing it all come together and right being done after all of the detail is put in i would be like going home every night and chugging a bottle of bourbon just to fucking <laughs> right. like, forget about it fall asleep but that, i'm glad that there are people in this world that could have so much attention to detail like that to create these like beautiful things yeah 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 i don't know it's really cool i don't know why that made me think of the fairy castle from the for those of you who are not from chicago the science and industry oh, museum the dollhouse yeah colleen moore's fairy castle all those little miniature things and like all the detail that went into it i know it, really it doesn't cool. do anything it just sits there but it's pretty and it's same detail oriented shit that's so cool Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah that's it's it's a, t- a talent man it is it's a it dedication <laughs> it's also a talent and uh not not dedication it's also talent to have a children's movie that could also equally scare the shit out of adults yeah with the other mother uh, yeah yes and there's some dark i think there's dark themes in this movie child neglect being one of them (laughs) yeah true true and even the ending i feel like isn't exactly a happy ending but i guess we'll get there when we get there (laughs) wait why not because I feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like she's still going to be neglected. <laughs> but but she's okay with it. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> he hits me because he loves me. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I think the beginning of this movie is sad. And even what it ends up with is kind of sad, too. Because in the end, they still only cared about their goddamn garden party and their catalog. <laughs> But she says, but her her real mother says, even though she hates dirt, she agreed with Coraline, and the garden was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> but does she care about Coraline? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, she got her those gloves that she wanted. That's true. I think so. I think she cares. All she wanted was some measly gloves. <laughs> and she got them, too. Oh, my God. But they couldn't even give her that. Not right away. <laughs> Not when your kid's being a little dick. <laughs> well, yeah. She is pretty sassy. She's, she's very sassy. She's a very fierce character. And if you notice, there's a family photo of them. Um, and she has brown hair, Coraline. And in the movie, she famously has blue hair, which means her parents are cool and they allow her to color her hair. Hell yeah. For being so young. They obviously have to care about her, right? She's she's her own person. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they don't even notice her hair is blue. <laughs> They just ignored the shit out of her. So I didn't even notice the picture. No. (laughs) I just thought she was being wacky. Oh, geez. And she does have colorful style. She really does. Well, that's the whole point, too. Like, when she goes to this other world, everything is, like, fun. It's Mm -hmm. colorful. Mm -hmm. And then she goes back to her normal world, and everything is gray and shabby. (laughs) It's really interesting because there's another 
stop motion animation movie that we'll be talking about this month that also it has the same thing where mm-hmm. there's one world which is super colorful and then there's another world that's very blue and gray and dark yeah exactly interesting interesting stuff good themes good themes all around i think it but it all has to do with like child imaginations i think too because they always want to they always say that like i think that's why people get their kids like colorful things because Mm -hmm. it's like stimulating for them and as an adult i guess we're boring (laughs) maybe that's the message i like colorful things sometimes (laughs) sometimes sometimes <laughs> yeah no i agree with that well that's like kids like a, shows are always like really quick and there's yeah. tons of color and yeah it's, a, yeah it's a childlike imagination for sure for sure or dreamlike i don't know i mean either way yeah like the the other world is uh, they say it in the movie the other mother or like i know they, the ghost kids call her the bell dom which i think is rooted in some kind of like fairy tale story or something but the other mother of the bell dom whatever she the cat says like she created this world based on what she thought you would like and it really doesn't exist outside of her home the garden whatever Mm -hmm. and it's super colorful because she is a kid and it is whimsical because she, she is a kid and it's magical and all these things um and it's the same way like Oh my god what was the point i was gonna make i totally fucking lost it just now that's so irritating <laughs> i'll think of it well it's just but I i'm think, agreeing with you yes well i think too it's it speaks to like what she doesn't have she dreams of all these things because it's not her reality and yeah. she's escaping her reality too yeah. you know it's true it comes back to the child the <laughs> yeah whereas in this other world she is the center of their universe their other world but it's all a facade. Well, yeah. And that's what also makes it depressing. <laughs> yeah. It just makes it sad. This movie is a therapy session. It honestly, it fucking is, man. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm looking too much into it, but I feel like that's like the theme of it overall. It makes me sad. <laughs> it makes me sad. <laughs> but it's beautiful. Yeah. It's sad in a beautiful way. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, oh my God, it's so pretty. <laughs> no it is pretty that's the that's the thing though like the artistry in this movie and the visuals are beautiful yeah like absolutely beautiful but the theme is what i'm saying is dark yeah no i i'm there with you and there's some scary moments there are well see let's for halloween i know like it's a thing now that everyone for a long time like since probably like what what mean girls when it came out and they were like halloween is sexy Everybody wants to be sexy for Halloween. Everyone wants to be something glamorous. And I always want to be more scary for Halloween. And that was, I think, I think I really topped myself when I went as the other mother. 2019? 2019. The last great Halloween before <laughs> yeah, really? the collapse of the world. Um, but I even found, like, the perfect fucking dress at it Goodwill. It was a really perfect dress. Oh, of all, oh, my God. It was, like, the best, it was the best costume I've ever done yeah it was great you were i remember when it, you pulled up in the car and i was like oh my god yeah. <laughs> jesus christ <That's> so creepy <laughs> it's on button eyes oh yes oh yes yeah it was so great um i have pictures of it they're on my instagram but we'll we'll be sure to post yeah we can again post. we can repost if you guys are interested if anyone cares <laughs> <laughs> you don't care no you do care it was a great costume it was you also looked great that year though beetlejuice yeah that was fun. we looked honestly the contour was right man. we looked mm-hmm. so good i remember seeing a picture that you posted on instagram before we came to get you and i was like oh, f- no fire. oh shit she popped fire. off with this though <laughs> okay yeah oh man and i haven't done it so well no i was a skelly and the skelly was good too and you were gozer yeah that's also a skelly. that was so great that was fantastic so my costume ripping yeah that's okay though. I felt really bad. I don't know why last Halloween it just like was not, was not it for me. No. No. Well, because I had to do a couple's costume, mm. and it was a fucking bag costume, and I always like to make my own costumes. So the fact that I had like a fucking 
spirit Halloween <laughs> bullshit. And I was like, okay. Well, we have I I, miserable. I mean, I have um, ideas for us in the future, which I know that you know about some of them. So yes, I, there's one in particular that I really want to do that I've been wanting to do forever. So maybe maybe this year. Yeah, this or year's next our year. year. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Because I technically already have a costume for this year. No oh, shit. <laughs> that I should probably use. Yeah. Fair enough. We'll see. We'll see. We'll get to it. We'll throw it up on Instagram. Yeah. Whenever we figure it out. <laughs> Absolutely. But in the so, meantime, Coraline. Let's get into Coraline. Has a 7.7 7 out of 10 on IMDb. It does a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, yeah, those are some high scores. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Some of the, the, the highest in the game. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe this came out in 2009. Yeah. We graduated high school in 2009. That is wild. My cousin was four. And I know I was telling you this before we recorded, but she had an obsession with Jasmine Oolong tea because of this movie. And then it spawned an obsession with Jasmine Oolong tea for me. And I still have this giant canister of it from Tivana that I don't think exists anymore. I mess up with. I do too. But I save that tea and drink it only on special occasions because it's so special to me. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. I know. I think the opening of this movie is like the goth version of the part in Toy Story <laughs> with the old man who's repairing Woody. Oh, yeah. I feel like this is like the goth version of that. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. Well, it's the it's the bell doll making the doll, the new doll. But it's a creepy doll as it opposed is. to Woody, who was like a normal doll. Okay. Well, according to who? Because Woody's <laughs> also creepy with those dead glossy eyes. Okay. <laughs> but that was more like relaxing because it no, was like I the know. old man and his little detail and Shining, his little airbrush and, air, oh. and his little trunk. But the like this puff. one is a lot more like darker, but I think it's like the same vibe. <laughs> yeah. It gives a... Uh, I don't know why for me it gives like Jack Skellington going, what does it mean? In his mm-hmm. lab when he's deconstructing the teddy bear. Yeah. But no, I say... I, yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, just an see. observation. She deconstructs a child doll, recreates a child doll in the image of Coraline, and sends it off into the abyss. Pretty creepy. Interesting. Yeah. So Coraline and her parents move into an awesome looking Victorian house. Hell yeah. The Pink Palace apartments that are, it's three stories. And so they treat it as a three flat. Yeah pretty awesome She's yeah she has neighbors yeah she has the neighbors below who are the two uh burlesque actresses we <laughs> love them and the neighbor above who is like a i don't know his whole thing is that he's training circus mice yeah <laughs> Well, he wants to start his own circus if you want to believe the fact on imdb supposedly he served in that he helped clean up chernobyl yeah. And they could tell that by the medals that he wears. Yeah. But yeah, and he's, he's bluish. <laughs> and he's blue and he's weird. Yeah. But I love him. Mr. Bobinski. Mr. Bobinski. <laughs> he's crazy. Yeah. So instead of unpacking, she's looking for an old well. And that's when she meets Wyborn. YB. I love YB. The kid is dope. He tells her that she's standing on it. Yeah, exactly. And then she gives her a several ominous warnings throughout the movie, like about how he's not allowed to go where she lives. Yeah, his grandma says that. Um, oh, his grandma owns, I think, the Pink Palace apartments. Um, but Wyborn is not allowed to go there, and he's surprised that she rented the apartment to Coraline and her parents because normally she doesn't rent to any children, uh, but for unknown reasons. Which we'll know later. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's also a cat. There's a black cat skulking around. Yeah. And I I love him too. Yeah. He reminds me of my black cat. Just as sassy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, just as sassy. Um, But he also tells her, so she's using a stick as like a dowsing rod, which if you don't know what a dowsing rod is, those are like those metal sticks that people used to like claim to seek ghosts with, you know, Mm. or like... You ask it a question and like the rods will cross, whatever. And YB calls her a water witch, but also tells her that she's dumb because the the fucking stick she's using is poison oak, mm-hmm. um, which also she has that rash 
oh, for yeah. a minute. I don't know why that's so funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> but then it also proves how magical that world is, the other world, because, because they then heal it. they heal it for her. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Oh, and then she finds the doll right away of her, like that replica doll. Yeah. It Well, and this is the interesting... No, I guess I guess YB does say that he gives it to her Mm because it's almost like weird. So when Coraline gets home, her mom is sitting at the table. This is when we see like the child neglect in full swing. (laughs) Yeah. Her parents are both working on a garden magazine. And uh, she wants the attention. It's a rainy day. Her mom says she's not allowed to go outside. And she's like, just like, fuck off for five seconds. But here, somebody left this on the porch for you. And uh, it's a doll that looks just like Coraline. And uh, it says why, like, it's the note is from YB saying that he found the doll in his grandma's, like, I don't know, house somewhere. Yeah. I forget where. Mm-hmm. But he thought it resembled her. And isn't that so weird? And it does. And it moves on its own. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, creeps. Looking for more frightfully good content? Head it over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash frightmightpodcast to help support the show. We have current movie reviews, spooky cocktail recipes to match our theme of the month that you can enjoy if you're 21 and over. Or not. I'm not your parent. <laughs> for legal reasons, I must say this. We play games, trivia, literal fright fights, and much, much more. If you head over to patreon.com slash fright mike podcast again patreon.com slash fright mike podcast you can find everything over there and again it is a great way to support the show we greatly appreciate it and we love you guys bye Bye. and then she does some more exploring and that's when she finds the magical door Mm -hmm. that is bricked up and, and wallpapered over and wallpapered over yeah, she begs her mom to open it, and the mom pulls out a key with a button on one end. It's a skeleton key, and when she opens it, it's just a brick wall, which I do find hilarious because later on when Coraline's mom locks the door and Coraline gets upset, she's like, there was rat poop in there. I forget what she says exactly, mm-hmm. but she's like, it was covered in rat shit. Yeah. She's like, hey, 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 those are mice, <laughs> which again makes me think of Scary Movie 3. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen a mouse outside. That's because it's a rat. <laughs> so it goes inside. It becomes a mouse. Yeah. If it goes inside. Damn. It's a mouse. <laughs> oh, fucking love that part. Yeah. Yeah. So like that night, she's awakened. Awakened? She's yeah. woken up. <laughs> By a squeaky mouse. By a, uh, yeah, a squeaky mouse who leads her back to the door. And that's when she realizes she can go through it. Yeah. And so she does. <laughs> it's like the coolest scene ever because it looks like one of those plasticky tunnels that like kids get yeah but it just like it all it like expands and it's like really cool it's like blue and purple and like i don't know it's super colorful like kind of reddish yeah and it goes right into seemingly what looks like her living room but it's different yes because she walks into the kitchen where her mom is and it's not really her mom it's her other mother with the button eyes with the button eyes looking creepy as fuck can we talk for a second though about the room that she enters the like drawing room or whatever Mm -hmm. so when she's going around her home counting all the windows doors whatever whatever she's like and one sad painting of a victorian boy and he's got like an ice cream cone but the ice cream is like dropped on the ground he's upset Mm -hmm. and then in the other world the boy has the ice cream and is happy is that not the ghost boy one of the ghost children probably because it kind of looks like him but it's also hard to tell because i i also think that the ghost children look like lock shock and barrel from nightmare before christmas well, didn't they li- like? Th- didn't the previous children live in that house as well? Yeah, and yeah. So that's maybe was- that's like they just never took the painting down. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because I was like, oh, it kind of looks like the ghost boy, but yeah, oh no, yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, interesting. It's like interesting. the haunted mansion where they have everyone's portraits on the wall of yes. the people that live there but died there. <laughs> yes, incredible. Love it. Love it. Yes, and she's yeah. The mom's always humming. The other mother, I'm sorry, yeah, is always humming. And the dad is, like, super fun and festive. And everything about this place is exactly how she would want it to be. The food is better. 
the walls have color on them she has like a fun room she can get whatever she wants whenever she wants like what did she say like a peach smoothie or something something gross i think it was a mango milkshake oh yeah mango <laughs> uh also the dad is like so fun and sings her a song on this like piano but it's interesting because the piano has like robot arms that his hands are in and he's being controlled by them like he's being puppeted Mm -hmm. by which is creepy later on when they show it again (laughs) Mm -hmm. oh my god yeah but everything is seemingly okay like she likes being there because it's a nice little escape from her actual reality which is dull yeah and she's in her room next to her bed in the real world she has a picture of her two friends that she left behind in michigan and she also has a little statue thing that i think the picture sits on of like a what would you call it a grasshopper a cricket yeah i think so and in the other world the picture comes to life kind of it's like a moving picture Mm -hmm. via like i don't know harry potter or something yeah and she can talk to them yeah and then i think it's cool because later on the dad is riding that giant grasshopper thing oh yeah very cool yeah but the mom rubs mud on her hands because of the rash and then they tuck her into bed because corn line's like i think i have to go back to like my other other mother and then when she wakes up in the morning her rash is gone everything is gone everything is back to normal and is she i don't know if she thinks she's dreaming at first but she's telling her mom all about the other world she's like the other mother did this and blah blah blah, and we had eight then we did this and the dad was playing the piano yeah they don't they don't buy her shit (laughs) yeah she was like oh maybe your other mother can buy you some fucking clothes too yeah (laughs) well and like then she goes that's when she goes to see uh mr bobinski who um is training his circus mice (laughs) yep yep but he gives her a warning too about Mm -hmm. not going through the door anymore yeah he says oh sometimes you know he says oh the little mice say don't go through the little door and Coraline's like what and he goes ah sometimes they get it wrong (laughs) i like the other two neighbors though too miss um forcible and spink miss forcible and miss spink (laughs) i love them (laughs) They're like retired burlesque actresses. And I love the posters. They like kind of like when Coraline's looking at their home, they kind of pan over the wall and there's posters of what I assume to be burlesque shows that they were in. Um, And one of them is King Lear, like Shakespeare, but also like men are leering at them. And then Julius sees her. Oh, (laughs) I love it. And they're stuffed dogs. <laughs> oh, I love their little, Sco- Scotty little Scotty dogs. dogs. <laughs> I want a Scotty dog so fucking bad. <laughs> and they're so cute. You even have one that's like still alive and they're like, he's not doing well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And they have all the fucking taffy that's hard as a rock from like yeah. 1926. Yeah. Hey, at least they're eclectic. <laughs> they are eclectic. Dude, I would love to live with them. Yeah. Uh, they they also give her a warning mm-hmm. as well because they read her tea leaves and one of them says something like, oh, beware of like a weird hand. And then the other one, I forget what the other warning was, like the other. They kept thinking, she kept thinking it was a giraffe. A She's giraffe. Like, You're reading it wrong. It's a yes. giraffe. And the other one says, no, it's a, it's a weird hand. Yeah. But I feel like both are kind of technically correct. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Definitely the weird hand. Yeah. The the other mother's needle hands. Well, and then YB kind of gives more of a backstory about his grandma and how her sister disappeared Mm -hmm. in the house and was never found. Yep. Weird. So. Because he says, uh, what did he he say? Like, oh, this said, uh, the house took her or something or it was he, yeah, like like, the oh, ho- yeah she was she was lost in the house or something yeah it was never found and then Coraline was like well maybe she ran away mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then they found the doll oh yeah he says that the grandma says she was stolen yeah that's what it is um yes so she decides that she's over this dull world and goes back through the portal again mm-hmm. and that's when she um that's when they show her the garden the garden that like her parents 
refused to work on in the real world but now it's like this magical garden that's like neon everything and super colorful and when you zoom out because of course the dad shows up on this like mechanical grasshopper thing that can fly and when you look at the aerial view of the garden it looks like Coraline because it's her ideal world yeah also and her other mother insisted and also in her ideal world, YB doesn't talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. The other mother made her a friend in YB with button eyes, um, but he doesn't speak. Yeah. She says, I, th- I thought you'd like him better this way. And she's like, I do. Coral and I was like, oh, sick. Yes. Uh, and Mr. Guy friend that doesn't actually talk. actually has a, a circus here, too. Yeah. Like a legit circus. In the other world, though, aren't they rats? Yeah. It or is, is it so. mice? I don't know. Because at one point they look like rats. Maybe. Is that towards the end? Uh, yeah. I think I think at the end they're like rats. It's crazy. You mean like when evil. he shatters the illusion? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they're rats. Because rats are evil, and mice are not. <laughs> mice are so cute and little. Yeah. Well, rats I think his disease. tent is cool because it's like looks small on the yeah. outside, and then she opens it, and it's like a full blown stadium seating situation. And they got cotton candy. Yeah. And all kinds of shit. They spell her name. Yeah. Honestly, that's that show is sick. Mm-hmm. But then, of course, the next morning is she's back to reality. Her boring reality. <laughs> she's over it. Yeah. I think that's when they go to uh, they the go store. T- yeah, they go into town. They got to get her clothes. Coraline wants gloves. And uh, she's like, my other mother would get them for me. And I was like, you know what? I am, if I were her if I were her real mom I'd be like all right little bitch then go, <laughs> go get him somewhere else I don't know my uh, god preteens are just so annoying I'm glad I never was one yeah she she is a little she's got a little dude she yeah, she's a little snotty yeah especially because her mom seemed like she just wanted like a nice day out with her especially because Coraline's been feeling neglected yeah well especially like what she says to her right before like the last time she sees her Mm -hmm. about how she didn't want to accompany her to go get groceries or something yeah she wanted to stay behind Mm -hmm. and uh fucks with the the other world and she goes in and uh this is when they watch the burlesque show, right? Yeah, they watch the burlesque show. And then basically Fantastic. the other mother is kind of like, wow, do you like all this? And do you want to have it all the time? Because if you do, we're going to put buttons in your eyes. For the low, low price of sewing these buttons directly into your eyes. Give you us stay your soul. Forever. Yeah, honestly. And she's not about that. She gets really creeped out. And she's like, nah. Yeah. And she tries to leave. And the other mother's like, what are you talking about, you ungrateful little twat? sit here um yeah i don't know it's it's super weird and creepy um well, she wakes up and she's still there yeah like yeah, she's, and she and but then oh, and then, the, then she goes to see the dad and he's like actually a puppet yeah it's it's a pretty creepy he's scene. part of the design that she this other mother bell dom he's like an animatronic <laughs> yeah and he like carter talks like this now because he's like powering down you know yeah she's not like fully in control mm-hmm. yeah she wakes up the dad is you know telling her to like get the fuck out of there and then i think this is when she goes to find the door mm-hmm. and it's blocked so this drawing room is like full of colorful insect like furniture and stuff and this beetle dresser is in the way and the other mother is sitting there and she's eating like chocolate beetles or something cocoa Dis- beetles something disgusting <laughs> yeah cocoa beetles it's the only time in the movie that we see her eat yeah which is interesting yeah, because it's usually just Coraline eating mm-hmm. and Coraline says i'm not fucking staying here let me go home and the other mother gets super pissed off and locks her in a room and says you can come out when you've learned to be a good daughter yeah rude but true and that's when she sees the ghost children. Yes. That tell her all about the bell dom and how she, you know, entices you in with this other world full of treats and goodies and wonderful things. And those kids, they just wanted to take, take, take. So they sewed the buttons and then she basically ate them. Yep. That's how I interpret it. Yeah. 
and uh that's rough <laughs> yeah yeah that sucks scares the shit out of Coraline. Mm-hmm. Like, oh. this is like child nightmares <laughs> right right being eaten also is this this is after she goes on a walk with that cat oh yeah when the color like when she's trying to walk away from the house but she can't yeah they basically walk to like this like white void and yeah. then it ropes back around and they're walking towards the house Oh. And she says, how can you be walking towards something you walked away from? And he said, that's because this is the only thing that exists in this world. Yeah. He also makes mention that he hates mice a lot. Yeah. That's going to come looping back around pretty pretty quick. Yeah. But she does make a deal with the ghost kids when she sees them that she, if she can get out of there, she will try to get their buttons, their eyes back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To set them free. Yep. And so she makes the deal with the other mother that if she can find these eyes, that she will let them go. Everybody go. Her, her parents. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. now her parents are trapped there. Yep. Um, she also gets that triangle Oh, thing yeah, that, from... like, seeing stone or whatever. Yeah. But where, how does she get that? I don't know how she gets that. I know she gets it. Hold on. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. She goes back to the real world. Yeah, for for a time, she's able to escape, mm-hmm. and so that's when she meets up with the real YB. Yeah, and he wants the doll back, mm-hmm. and she says she can't find it, and there's all kinds of stories or whatever, and he runs off saying she's crazy, and she goes to find her parents, but they're not there, even though their car is there, and she realizes that. The other mother has taken them. Um, But before she does that is when she goes to see Forcible and Spink again. And she was like, have you seen my parents? And they're like, uh, no. (laughs) But give me that old ass taffy. Let me crack it open. And they hand her that little triangle thing. We'll do that. I don't remember that happening. Really? I must have zoned out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was like, hold on. Before she goes and makes the deal, she has to have the triangle thing. I was wondering where she got the stone from. Yeah, she goes, uh to forcible and spink's house and they're like here it's supposed to um it's supposed to see things that are bad and again like they yeah. they can't decide if it's um if it's they can see things that are good or bad yes um bad or lost mm-hmm. so obviously she takes it to the other realm to get her parents um she uh she makes the deal with the the other mother where if she can find the three children's eyes and her parents that she has to let those children go and let her return with her parents and the other mother says that they have a deal and she does give Coraline a hint on where to find the ghost children's eyes but not her parents right and so she realizes when she looks through the little triangle thing that she can see the objects that are the eyeballs because they glow. Yeah. And they're hidden in the three wonders that she's made for Coraline. So one being in the garden, which is the da- the dad like really does her a solid. Yeah. You know, he gets a four. He does because it was on the top of the gear shift of the grasshopper. Grasshopper. Thing. <laughs> the second eyeball is with forcible and spink. I'm honestly fucking crying at the bat dogs. The bat every dogs. Every time <laughs> that fucking kills me. I, I love, love that. It. The little Scotty dogs. Mm-hmm. Yep. Forcible yeah. and Spink do this. Oh, they're sleeping. Yeah. And like a taffy thing. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, but they're, the eyeball is on their ring. Mm-hmm. And she is able to somehow bring the scotty dogs to like attack forcible and spank and then she pulls the ring off of her finger yeah and then the third is at bobinski's circus Mm -hmm. that one's a little difficult because it's the ball that the mouse play with you know like the stereotypical like children's ball with a star on it yeah and the one mouse gets away Mm -hmm. and until until the cat gets it oh of course She's like, oh, fuck. I really fucked this up. That's it. I tried. And then you hear the cat. And he's like, I told you. I've always hated mice and rats. Because I think at this point they're rats now. Yeah. Or they look like rats. Yeah. Well, the illusion is dropping. Yeah. So. 
and basically yeah like you said the illusion of everything is crumbling it crumbles as she's going yep like everything basically turns to like stone yeah and then the whole world falls apart Mm -hmm. when she collects all three eyeballs and she runs inside with the cat and that's basically all that's left yeah it's just the house but at this point the other mother has like fully transformed into like the spider i love it every time you see her she gets creepier and creepier yeah she changes it's incredible and now at this point she is just this like spidery she has these spider fingers (laughs) Mm -hmm. they're like needles yeah and her face is all cracked and her head's all pointy Mm -hmm. she is terrifying oh it's fucking awesome yeah, and so she takes the seeing eye back from her and throws it in the fire mm-hmm. and burns it. And then she's basically like, okay, now like you have one chance to find your parents. And so Coraline realizes that she, she has a little plan where she says that her parents are actually behind the door. Well, when the other mother goes to open it, she's like, no, you're wrong. That's when she realizes that they're in the snow globe Yeah, that she was looking at from the beginning of the movie. It's this whole trick. Coraline's so clever. Yeah. Because the other mother swallowed the key. Right. Earlier on when she locked Coraline in. Mm-hmm. So the only way to get out was for her to regurgitate that key and unlock it. So she grabs a snow globe that her parents are in and she basically makes a run for it because she throws the cat at the other mother. Yeah. To scratch her eyes out. I love Which this scene does. though because when she creates that giant spider web so she can't escape. It's so fucking awesome. It's so cool. It looks like a grid. Yeah. Like it's, everything falls out from like what it, it like the, the appearance floor. of everything. Yeah. Like the floor just turns into like a black and white grid. And it makes this really cool like metal noise. Almost like the web is made out of like metal. Yeah. It's fucking sweet. And Coraline falls to the bottom of it. The other mother fully transforms into this, like, spider woman thing. And it's crazy because Coraline kind of, like, dings something off the side of the the metal spider web. So even though the other mother doesn't have eyes, she can feel the vibrations from where she is. Mm-hmm. And it's this, like, whole creepy chase crawling up. Yeah. And, uh, ooh, it's it's just so fucking good because the cat, after he scratches the eyes out, he does go through the tunnel. So he's back in the regular world. Coraline, she makes it through the, the tunnel, but she, she's having a hard time closing the door. And so the ghost children help her. But it's spooky because her hand gets, like, cut off in the tunnel and the other mother is banging from the other side, like, doing this screech thing like Mm -hmm. i need you like i'll die without you i'll Mm -hmm. die without you i was like (laughs) so fucking creepy because it's literally like a desperate attempt at something that's going to starve if she doesn't eat a fucking child like oh yeah how fucking nightmare fuel (laughs) i'll die without you that's fucking haunting Mm -hmm. so Coraline makes it she does lock the door but the hand somehow makes it out yeah because when she goes to put the eyeballs of the children underneath her pillow to get them the other mother comes back yeah to get them yeah ish kind of (laughs) well i and at what point i'm sorry there's like a whole line from ghost too where that like ghost girl so the ghost girl with the ribbon hair oh yeah they warn her yeah they warn her they say you're in danger girl um, which is from Ghost, <laughs> which is cute. But that's also the grandma's sister that was long lost. But the children are set free, but they do warn her, like, you're in danger. She's going to come back for you. There's only one key. You have to get rid of it. And so she thinks, like, what can I do? Where can I drop this key? And she figures out, oh, the well. So in the middle of the night, she takes the key to the well. But the fucking hand follows her. Uh, luckily so does yb because he believes her and it's this whole struggle where you think yb is gonna fall down the the well but he doesn't and uh everything falls to the bottom of the well or i guess they throw it to the bottom of the well yeah and then he they saved the day he did yeah and then it all ends with the her parents having their garden party <laughs> true very true um it is cute though yb does bring his grandma and Coraline's like you and i got a lot to talk about madam you won't believe the shit i've been through Uh uh-huh uh-huh 
You know what's fascinating about this movie is that I read that there were 130 sets, different sets for this movie over the course of on 52 stages, which is the most ever used for a stop motion movie. That's great. Which I can believe because of how many locations she goes to. Yeah. And how many like cool designs and like basically having two different versions of each world. Yeah, and this movie was also shot in 3D. Yeah. Which actually, like, on my disc um, that I watched it on, there was, like, a 2D, 3D option. They're like, flip the disc over for 3D. I feel like I vaguely remember this being released in 3D. Yeah. I remember the um, 3D glasses. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. That was, was, I feel like, at another resurgence of of, uh, 3D. Uh, Well, that's when everything was being in 3D. Uh You know, like, er everything... Not everything was shot to be in 3D, but everything was coming out in 3D. Yep. And I think this movie was specifically shot to be in 3D. It feels like it. It's so cool. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of layers yeah. and creativity. So, that being said, yeah. what are you going to give Coraline? I love Coraline so much. It's, I don't know, it holds a special place in my heart. So, for me, I'm giving it a 5 out of 5 because Ooh, I love five it. 5 out of 5. I love it so much. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Yes, because I think it's a beautiful movie and it's haunting, and the animation is ab- absolutely incredible. A hundred percent. Um, yeah. The other mother is like by and far one of my favorite characters of all time, and she's crazy. Oh, <laughs> she, she, fucking great. And I, I hate. I will say, okay, maybe hates a strong word. I don't love those pop figure things that everyone was like literally shitting their pants over and i feel like a lot of people still do however i do have a Coraline one and i do have the other mother i had to you had to i had to it was so sick Mm -hmm. with the button eyes and the hunchback and the pointy head and the badonk Uh, the donk she got a badonk (laughs) yes um i Outside of watching horror-related things, I'm a an avid Real Housewives watcher, <laughs> and I hate to say, but the only reason I bring this up is because if anybody watches the Real Housewives of Orange County, tell me that Heather Dubro does not look like the other mother. I want you to tell me she doesn't, because someone pointed that out to me, and now I can't unsee it. It's forever there. It's forever in my mind. So now when I watch it, I just am like, oh, God, <laughs> it's the other mother. I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> well, let us know. Let us know. <laughs> you can find us over on Facebook, Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter, uh, at Fright Mike Podcast. So uh, leave a comment and let us know what you think about Coraline. Or if you agree with Sam, that the, <laughs> that lady looks like the other mother. Yes. <laughs> Heather Dubrow looks like the other mother. Uh, if you want to help support the show for just a few bucks a month, head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Fright Mike Podcast. We have a ton of extra bonus content for you to enjoy over there, and then you can help support our show in that way. And then, of course, if you can't support us in that way, we'd be sad. But there is also another option for you. You can do give us a nice five-star rating review a raving review of course <laughs> especially over on spotify and apple um we would really appreciate that we'll help. die without you oh god yeah, we'll die <laughs> without you <laughs> anyway until next time i'm liz i'm sam rest, rest in, in peace, peace.